Maybe it's a pill. Or a spray. A liquid medicine. An easy and safe treatment to target SARS-CoV-2. It would be given immediately after diagnosis. Ideally, it's available over the counter in a pharmacy, a cheap antiviral tablet with bearable side effects. We have vaccines. We even have drugs that help with the most serious symptoms of COVID-19. In the hunt for a drug, scientists are exploring many different treatments. But where are we in the search for a pill? Good question. Welcome to our COVID-19 special. I'm Monica Jones from Berlin. Good to have you with us. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just pop a pill and COVID-19 would be nothing more than a nasty cold? Science is working on a variety of therapies, but it's somewhat slow going. How do you switch off the coronavirus? Render it harmless. German scientists at Korat Therapeutics set themselves this task a year ago. Twelve months later, they seem to have achieved their goal. Most drugs currently in development target mild cases of COVID-19 illnesses. Our drug is specially designed to cure serious illnesses as well. Their research and initial clinical tests, which have been running for a few days, were primarily financed by private investors and government funding from the state of Lower Saxony. But now, the company needs more funding. Of course we want to be ready to meet market needs, and our goal is to get the emergency approval by the end of the year. Then we would have to produce in sufficient scale that we can supply patients with the necessary medication. Currently, the German government offers funding of 50 million euros, which is split between several companies. This compares with over 740 million euros in funding for vaccine research. We need tens of thousands of volunteers for testing. That's what costs a lot of money and where you simply need larger sums. When you vaccinate healthy people, you need a lot more healthy people than when you are testing a drug that is targeted at the sick. Recently, however, the federal government appears to have rethought the issue and further funds have already been announced. We lost many, many months because the financial resources were simply not available for the drug developers. We can no longer afford to keep wasting time. Korat Therapeutics says it needs 50 million euros to reach the emergency approval stage. German government funds won't be enough for this, so the biotech startup has been speaking to international investors. Now, antiviral treatments attack the virus and stop it multiplying, but the virus doesn't fight fair. Using our own cells to reproduce and finding a treatment is difficult at the best of times, let alone during a pandemic. So far, the only antiviral drug approved for the treatment of COVID-19 in Germany is remdesivir. Studies show a 33% reduction in the duration of the illness. There are other treatments being developed. American pharmaceutical giant Merck is working on a similar drug called Molnupiravir, and Pfizer has also started human tests on an antiviral drug. If the immune system overreacts in a later phase of the disease, steroids such as dexamethasone come into play. It's a cortisone that curbs the immune system. In Germany too, dexamethasone is used in severe cases, that is, when the patient receives additional oxygen. There are also preparations for antibody treatment, which helps prevent symptomatic infection. The drug from U.S. pharma giant Regeneron helped former U.S. President Donald Trump. Antibodies are also found in the blood plasma of recovered COVID-19 patients. Their effect depends on the severity of the illness and how long ago it was. Germany's public health body, the Robert Koch Institute, says deployment in severe cases is possible. 
Miram Stegemann is a senior ID physician at the Department of Infectious Diseases and Respiratory Medicines at Charité University in Berlin. Uh, so very good to have you with us, especially because you are now offering the use of monoclonal antibodies, in short MAB or MAB, in the so-called COVMAP outpatient clinic in Berlin. What exactly does this therapy offer? Well, we um, offer treatment with um, one of the two available monoclonal antibody products. Um, these um, monoclonal antibodies um, target the S protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And um, they have a potential to prevent um, the uh, progression to severe disease and um, elevate symptoms and yeah, limit the progression um, in patients with mild to moderate um, COVID um, disease. Um, particularly, we know that in those who have not developed yet an, um, an endogenous antibody response, we know that um, there is potential that these patients patients benefit from this kind of therapy. And who are these patients that are actually eligible to benefit from it? Uh, is it available to everyone? Well, um, uh, there are some criteria which we look at um, to um, find the right patients. Um, we look for patients who um, have a new positive test. So we um, need a, um, a test uh, PCR result, which is not older than 72 hours um, to um, provide um, the security that we only treat patients in the early course of infection. Um, and uh, we look for certain risk factors in the patients, um, which are, for example, age or um, immunosuppression, um, uh, for example, pa patients who are on um, active chemotherapy because of um, um, cancer, um, patients who um, are um, organ transplant patients and therefore on immunosuppression are candidates um, for the treatment. Other patients, for example, who have received uh, medication which is called rituximab, patients um, who suffer of AIDS are candidates. Um, um, people uh, with Down syndrome are patients, kidney um, uh, failure patients, patients on chronic hemodialysis, patients uh, with obesity, with a severe um, uh, elevated um, body mass index um, over 35, right. for example. And you probably patients, have to, yeah, you, uh, probably, also, yeah. you probably need to go to your own GP and basically prove that you are one of those patients who, who actually can get this kind of treatment. But could this therapy also help prevent an infection? Um, well, there are some um, preliminary results um, showing that it could prevent um, infection, but the results from randomized controlled trials are not published yet, so we do not use it as a prevention, let's say, as a post-exposure prophylaxis when you assume infection. So we so far only use it for patients with a proven infection, um, which uh, we use the PCR result for. Now, of course, I have to remind you that we're all dreaming of a simple cure as we said at the beginning of the program, a pill, a spray, something like that to help us through an infection. Uh, how realistic is that notion? Well, of course, that's what we all dream of. Um, so far, we do not really have anything really um, close, coming up closely. Um, for example, just a pill. Of course, there are still trials going on um, and we're looking for treatment options. But so far, there is no serious single pill, for example, um, which we can uh, hope to be the future easy treatment. And everybody says the one way to really fight this uh, pandemic is vaccination. And once enough people are vaccinated to reach what we call herd immunity, do we actually still need therapy? Good question. Um, 
sure, I think um, we will always need treatment options. Um, of course, we always have to monitor the, um, the virus um, if we um, look for antiviral treatment options. Um, there might be some change in the virus itself. Like right now, what is going on with the variants occurring? This means that some of the antiviral options might not work anymore. Um, and then on the other hand, we also have the anti-inflammatory treatment options, but um, so far most of them are still under investigation. So we're still hoping to find a good treatment. And I think we will always need a treatment um, to come back to your question. Um, even though if the um, vaccination strategies will be um, even more rolled out and um, we have a higher um, um, per, um, percentage of population mm -hmm. to be vaccinated, we will always probably uh, face some infections and some of them will need treatment as well. So, yeah, it's, uh, I think, always something what we will need Definitely. to in Definitely the worth investigating further then. Dr. Stegemann from the Charité in Berlin, thank you so much. Thank you. Let's get back now to the root of our troubles and that, of course, is the virus and its variants. Time to hand over to Derek. Is it possible that the same variants arose independently without travel in different places? The answer to this touches on one of my favorite evolutionary concepts called convergence. Um, it's basically the idea that when different species face similar environmental pressures in different places, then nature can come up with remarkably similar solutions to cope with them. A good example of convergence is, for instance, the, the protective spines that are embedded in the skin of both porcupines and hedgehogs. Uh, the trait didn't arise just once in a common ancestor and then get passed down. It evolved independently in both species because a spiny outside is, is clearly a good defense against predators if you're small and slow and, and just want to be left in peace to eat your leaves and insects. Viral genomes also change constantly, and it happens a lot faster than with animals because viruses replicate so quickly and abundantly. Um, the vast majority of those changes will be neutral or, or even harmful, but a tiny number of them will give a virus an advantage. For example, a mutated gene might change the spike proteins on its surface in ways that allow the virus to slip into cells uh, more easily. And because the SARS-CoV-2 genome is, is actually pretty small, the chances of specific identical mutations like that occurring in different places at different times is actually fairly high. So we are seeing some of this sort of genetic convergence, but because variants also collect many other highly individual mutations as they evolve, genetic sequencing still allows us to tell them apart. Derek Williams there, and he'll be back again tomorrow to answer more of your questions. Just post them on our COVID-19 YouTube channel. For now, that's all for this edition of our COVID-19 special. Thanks for watching.